Today my friends were talking about barrel aged cocktails because it's fun, but also because I have to make one, remember? These are two vintage and rare bottles of Vermouth. If by any chance they are still good, I'm gonna barrel age the cocktail and once ready, I'm gonna make it available for you here at the Conca in Bordeaux. Oh my God, this is incredibly good. You know what I mean, right? I have to make a cocktail now. So this will be the perfect occasion for me to share my tips and tricks on how to achieve the perfect barrel-aged cocktail. And don't be bummed by the fact that I'm using a vintage vermouth that's quite unique, because I'm gonna give you some alternatives so you can still make it delicious at home easily. Let's go! Before I give you my tips on how to make great barrel aged cocktails, let's just have a little chat on why we do it and what you should expect if you do it. Wood barrels started to be used as shipping containers and storage more than 2000 years ago. They were used to store and ship any kind of stuff. Nails, gold coins, you name it. But for liquids, clay vessels were preferred. There are some evidence that lead us to think that it's the Romans during the 3rd century AD that would have started to use water-sealed wood barrels to store and transport their wine. Then they simply realized by accident that the wine was tasting better after a little while in the barrel. And this is how the barrel aging for booze was born and it never stopped since then. But why does it make it better? What does it do to your booze? Well, to make a long story short, it simply makes it smoother and it adds a lot of flavors. Vanilla notes, spices, this is what we hear the most often, but it can get way more complex than that and also kind of random. And this is when the fun starts because it's kind of experimental. And I guess this is why I do it, to have some fun and to see how a cocktail I already know will be like after a little while in contact with some wood. I know it's gonna be smooth all the flavors will be blended, and if we think well of the ingredients before end, I know the flavors imparted by the barrel will improve the cocktail, and this is something I love to see happening. So if that sounds interesting to you too, here's what I've learned over the years that will help you to up your barrel aging game. But first, a quick word to thank the sponsor of today's video. Into2DM is a clothing brand I legit fell in love with a few months ago. At first, I tried their basic line because that's usually what I'm all about. I grab a black tee, a black cap, and a black hoodie, and I'm good to go. They nail what I like to call the holy trinity of apparel, fit, quality, and details. They fit me like a glove, the fabric is both eye-hand and super comfortable, and they have that little attention to details that makes them stand out. Recently though, I fell for more originality, and I grabbed some some pieces of their graphic collection and that's also by the way kind of their strength and I love them. They check all the boxes of my holy trinity theory and they look sick. Right now if you go to their website they're offering you bundle prices both on the basic line and the graphic line and if you use my promo code at checkout you will get an additional 10% discount so that's more money in your pocket and you're gonna look like a million bucks. That's great. And before we go back to the barrel age cocktail, look at this one. <sighs> this should be perfect for a video I'm working on right now. Kind of the sequel of the most seen video on the channel, my mojito video. So stay tuned for that. It should be a cool one. Now back to the video. The first tip of the day will be very basic, but if you never used a barrel before, this will be very handy. A brand new barrel is not water sealed, so it's gonna leak from everywhere, and you don't wanna waste your booze, so you have to fix this. How to do it is very simple. You're gonna place your barrel in the sink or in the bathtub if you bought a big one, you're gonna fill it up with water and wait overnight. This should stop the leaking. If it doesn't, you simply repeat the process. You empty the barrel, refill it with fresh water, and wait one more night. We always use fresh water because water in contact with wood can develop some mold and obviously we don't want to contaminate ourselves or the barrel. Now it is sealed so we can start using it but not quite yet with cocktails so that leads us to tip number two. Now we have to wash and season the barrel. A brand new one is just too intense to age cocktails in it. So this is why I always recommend to fill it up with booze first. This will wash your barrel, it will smoothen the flavors of it because the more we use a barrel, the less flavor it communicates to the liquid and it will also season the barrel. Some of the liquid will be absorbed by the wood and eventually released in future liquid inside it. So this is why we call it seasoning the barrel. So obviously the choice of booze will have an impact on future batch of cocktails so these are my favorite options. Vodka is a great option when you just want to smoothen your barrel. 
When you think about it, it's almost like filling it up with White Dog, aka unaged whiskey. And aside from bourbons, pretty much all whiskeys are aged in used bourbon barrels, so it just makes sense to wash your own with vodka. Now, if you want to be more creative, you can also use spirits like mezcal or Jamaican rums, for example. It can be very interesting to see how the smoky mezcal or the hogo in a Jamaican rum can have an impact on the flavors of a cocktail you're gonna age eventually in your barrel. Obviously, those options are more expensive, but don't worry, this is not gonna go to waste. You can still use the spirits after the aging. It's simply gonna be oakier. So, if you have the money, be creative, it can be very cool. Lastly, I'm a huge fan of sherry to wash and season my barrels. I don't know, there's something about that funky and fruity flavor in the sherry that I believe makes a barrel taste extremely tasty. And I'm not alone, there's a huge trend in the spirit world to double mature your spirit in sherry cask, and there's a good reason for that, it is extremely tasty. So if you want to give it a try, I highly recommend it. Number three, size matters. Yes, the smaller the barrel, the faster the aging. And be careful, yes, it is possible to overage a cocktail in a small barrel. My rule of thumb, I usually try not to exceed 30 days for small barrels, between one to two liters. Then for three to five liters barrels, I try not to go over three months. And for larger barrels, about 10 liters, I can go up to six months to age my cocktail. Those are not strict numbers though, and that leads us to tip number four. Whatever you're aging, always sample taste a little bit of it every seven days. There's a lot of money and booze in your barrel and you don't want to waste that. And believe me, an over oaky cocktail can be very repulsive. Tip number five, when you feel the cocktail is ready, take it out of the barrel, like the whole thing, right away. Don't leave it there. Trust me. And also filter it through a cheesecloth or a fine mesh strainer to make sure to get rid of all the little impurities left behind by the wood. Now, I know this one's gonna be tough, but if you're able, leave your cocktail resting in a glass bottle for about a week before drinking it. It will simply make all the flavors so much smoother and well incorporated together, it makes a huge difference. Also, if your cocktail has wine-based spirit in it, please leave it resting in the fridge. Tip number seven, if you leave your barrel empty between batches for a little while, chances are it's gonna start leaking again because the wood will dry and shrink. So repeat step number one before trying some booze, back in that barrel. And now, with all that being said, we're ready to make our own batch of barrel-aged cocktails. Let's go. So my goal for today's cocktail was to highlight the beautiful vintage vermouth I found and really make them the star of the show. I also wanted to make a batch that would be large enough so I could serve it to a big group of people for the event that we're gonna make. So I decided I would start on the base of a Manhattan, which will approximately triple my amount of liquid than if I would just make a vermouth cocktail. I also feel that Manhattan is a great base when you wanna highlight some vermouth flavors and I'm really happy on how it turned out. So now for the ingredients, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go with my vintage vermouth, but if you to do the recipe at home, I highly recommend you go with light-bodied French vermouths. I tried with Dolly Sweet and Blanc and the result was fantastic. And don't confuse the Blanc vermouth with the dry vermouth. Blanc vermouth is kind of a sweeter version of the dry, so pick both sweet vermouth, the red and the Blanc. For the spirit, I went for a split base of both rye and reposado mezcal and you will see it will all make sense in a second. For the rye, I went for minor case finished in sherry cask. You see where I'm going here? I want to highlight the wine ingredients and the whiskey aged in a sherry cask really elevates those fruity notes and it's a perfect pairing. Then for the addition of the mezcal, this was just intuitive. When I was trying the sweet vermouth, I was getting heavy dark chocolate notes and vegetal notes and for me it was screaming mezcal. But I didn't want it to be smoky or too smoky because I didn't want it to overpower on the vermouth, which I wanted to be the star of the show still. So I went for a Reposado Mezcal and the match was perfect. Then if you watch my tasting video, you heard me talking about orange notes. So by adding just a little bit of Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao, which is a cognac based orange liqueur, I again highlight those wine notes and orange notes from the vermouth and I add just a little bit of texture, sweetness and dimension to the cocktail that I felt was lacking. Lastly, for the balance, we're gonna need bitterness and I went for Grapefruit Hop Bitters by Bitter Sling. For me, the hop really makes the rye more spicy and the grapefruit, again, is to highlight the orange citrus notes, but on the other side of the spectrum, the bitter side rather than the sweet side with the curacao and the sweet vermouth. So to recap a little bit the ingredients, here's what you're gonna need. Both red and blanc vermouth, rye whiskey, orange curacao, reposado mezcal, and grapefruit hop bitters. 
So as I told you that we have to make sure that what we put in the barrel is good as is, we're gonna try it now in a single portion. And we're gonna start with one ounce and a half or 45 mils of rye whiskey, half an ounce or 15 mils of Reposado Mezcal, a quarter of an ounce or 7.5 mils of Curacao, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, half an ounce of blanc vermouth, and then one dash or one mil of bitters. Now, at this point, if you're making this to make a large batch of barrel-aged cocktail at home, you can try it with a bar spoon, and if it's good, place it in a the barrel, then make your larger batch with simply multiplying your ratios and pour that over to fill up your barrel. But today, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna make it till the end, try it and give you some tasting notes so you have a better idea of what the cocktail is if you wanna make it. So, we're gonna fill our mixing glass with ice. And we're gonna stir it for about 60 revolutions or 20 seconds or so. Now we can strain it in a chill cocktail coupe. And lastly, we're gonna express an orange zest over the cocktail that we're gonna discard. Cheers. You know, I was really tempted to call this cocktail just like the Manhattan number no. X because if you make it at home, I'm sure you will agree with me, if you don't know what the ingredients are, you will tell yourself it is a Manhattan, a unique one for sure, but it is still in that range. The fact that we lower the amount of rye, that we use the full ounce of vermouth, add a little bit of mezcal, orange liqueur and change the bitters, we are unique, very vibrant, but we are still in that beautiful family of a Manhattan cocktail and you know, I have the feeling it's gonna turn out really well after few weeks in the barrel i can wait to try it so without further ado let's just make a larger batch and place it in that bad boy it is super simple all you have to do is just to scale up the ingredients for the size of your barrel place back the cork and wait until it's ready you can also agitate gently your barrel just to make sure all the ingredients are properly incorporated and that's it you've just made yourself a beautiful and delicious barrel aged cocktail that will be ready in a couple of weeks so my friends, this is it for me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and hit that notification bell on if you wanna make sure not to miss the next one. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers. Now, if you wanna be creative, barfly. Missed it.